Since we're currently snowed in in Glasgow, I've decided to make a tutorial video on getting started with Microsoft Word. This will take you through the use of the navigation pane. It will show you how to assign headings correctly, to insert figures with captions, to cross-reference such figures, and to insert a table of contents and page numbers. And finally, we'll save this document as a PDF using the headings as bookmarks. So I've just opened up Word and I've selected the Show Hide Formatting button. So every time I press a space now, a dot will show on screen. When I press Return, you'll see the paragraph mark. And when I press Tab, you'll see the arrow denoting a tab. So if I just zoom in, you'll be able to see this in more detail. So if I press this button again to hide the formatting, you'll see what the document looks like when it's going to be printed. However, for actually writing a document, it's useful to see this formatting because it's obvious if you've typed in a double space or something by mistake. What I also like to do is go to View and Enable Grid Lines and here you'll be able to see how your formatting aligns with a grid. The next thing I'm going to do is enable the navigation pane and this is under grid lines once again in the view tab. So let's just zoom and because I've got the show height formatting enabled I can see I've got a space at the start of my document so I'm just going to get rid of that. So if I go to home, you'll see to the top that there's the options to select a title. So I'm just going to make a basic document talking about the British Isles and specifically our flag. So to the top on the home tab, I'm going to select title and you'll see the paragraph mark has changed to reflect the formatting of the title. So I'm just going to call the title The British Isles. And now I'm going to select Heading 1 and I'm going to start with The Kingdom of Scotland. And you'll see to the left The Kingdom of Scotland has appeared in the navigation pane. So what I'm going to do now is just copy some images into the Word document. So this first image I'm going to first right click it, select copy and then go into the word document right click it and select paste what I can also do is open up Windows Explorer and drag and drop the image to Microsoft Word this will also insert the image into the word document I only need this image once so I'll delete the second one and what I want to do now is leave an image caption. So I'm going to go to References and I'm going to go to Insert Caption. And because it's a figure, I'll leave it as figure and then I'll type in the information that I want to leave as the caption. So now I want another Heading 1, so I'm once again going to go to the top, select Heading 1, and this time type 2, the Kingdom of England. This will show in the navigation pane, and once again I want to copy and paste an image. I want a caption for this image, so I'm going to select the Reference tab, I'm going to select Insert Caption, and I'm going to go and type the caption. So now what I want to do is change the size of the image. So I'm just going to scroll up and to do this, I'm going to select the first image. And you'll see a pictures tool tab now shows. So I can select this and format. And to the right, I can type in the width of the image. And by default, the aspect ratio is locked. So the height will automatically adjust as well. To the second image, I'm going to use the grid lines just to align it to the first one using a drag and drop. 
and I managed to get 14 quite accurately. So both images are nicely aligned. So what I want to do now is just center both images. So I'm going to select the first one and then select the align to the middle button. And this works for objects as well as text. So what I want to do now is insert a page break. So I'm going to go to the layout tab. I'm going to select breaks and then select a page break. And because I've got the show hide formatting button enabled, the page break will show. So now I want a new heading, but this time I want a heading two opposed to a heading one. And I'm going to type in the principality of Wales as this heading. And you'll see in the navigation pane, this is shown and heading two is indented with respect to heading one. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste an image into Word. I'm going to resize it so its width is 14. And I'm going to go to References, Insert Caption, Select Figure, and then type in the caption. And now I've got Figure 3. And I just want to center the image so it matches the others. And I actually want to paste another image in here. So I'll repeat the process again. Once again, I'll insert a caption for the figure. I'll type in the caption and then I'll go ahead and I'll resize the image and center it once again like before. So now I'm happy with this image. What I'm going to do is go ahead and insert the next image. And once again, I'm going to resize it. I'm going to center it and I'm going to insert a caption for the image. And I'll type in the caption. And now what I want is a new heading, but I want this to be a heading one again. So I'm going to select heading one at the top and I'm going to type in the heading, which is free the kingdom of Ireland. And once again, I want to copy and paste an image. I want to resize it. I want to center it and I want to type a caption for this image. And now once again, I want a new heading and this time I want heading one again. And what I want to do is type in the first union and I need a page break before this. So once again, I'm going to go to page and select page break. And you'll see that I had an unwanted space before this heading denoted by a paragraph mark. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And once again, I'm going to copy and paste an image through. I'm going to resize it. I'm going to give it a caption. And I'm going to center it. So now I'll type in the caption. And now what I want to do is cross reference another figure. So I'm going to go to the reference tab. I'm going to go to cross reference. I'm going to make sure figure is selected to the left and to the right. I'm going to make sure I'm only going to select the figure number and not the full caption of the figure. And I'm going to continue writing the figure caption and I want a second cross reference. So I'm going to repeat the process by once again selecting cross reference, select figure, select only label and number and select figure five. So this figure caption references the two earlier figures, figure one and figure five. And now what I want is another heading, this time another heading one. So I'm going to go to the top and select heading one and type in this time the second union. And once again, I'm going to paste another image through. 
once again I'll resize this image, I'll center it and I'll leave a caption. So I'll type the caption in and I want cross references this time to figure 7 and figure 6. So I'll repeat the same procedure by going to references and cross reference ensuring figure is selected and selecting the figure that I want. And now what I want to do is insert a page break. And now what I want to do is copy and paste a final figure into the document. And once again, go to references and insert caption and write the caption for this figure. So you'll notice that the navigation pane now has five heading ones and a heading two. And if there was a heading three, then it would be even more indented than the heading two. So we can zoom out and scroll through the document to make sure it looks okay. And what I want to do now is go to the title and select it and then press return so I have a new paragraph mark and here I want to go to references and to the far left what I want to do is select table of contents and I'll just use the first one and now my formatting is a bit messed up so what I want to do is insert a page break below the table of contents so I'll go to layout, I'll select breaks and I'll select page and this will move my first heading over to a new page and then I'm going to right click the table of contents and I'm just going to update it because the page numbers will have changed. So I can quickly scroll through the document to make sure everything else is okay. And now what I want to do is actually insert page numbers and I want to insert them on the footer. You can do this also in the header but the convention is normally on the footer. So what we need to do is just double click the footer so I'll just do this on the first page. And to the top we'll see the header and footer tools now show and to the far left what I can do is select page number and then I can select bottom of page and then in the middle of the page. And for some reason it gave me an additional paragraph. So what I can do is just delete this. So the page numbers are in the correct place and have the correct spacing. So I can just scroll from my document just to make sure I'm happy with it. And I can zoom out and I can select view multiple pages. And what I can see immediately is that I had an additional paragraph before the first heading. And the show paragraph marks also highlight this. So what I'm going to do now is go to File, Save As and Save My Document. And for best results you should save your document regularly as a new file. And what I like to do is just leave a number at the end of the file name denoting the revision. Saving as a new file name means you can easily go back to stuff you made in an old version of the document. Sometimes people write something and then they delete what they wrote and then later on feel that they should re-input what they wrote and if they've saved over the document then they've lost this information. And what you can also do is save the document as a PDF by changing save as type to PDF. And if we select options, what we can do is check the box to create document bookmarks using the headings. I don't know why this option isn't enabled by default, but it's relatively easy to enable it. So I'm going to select save and now my PDF will automatically open up in Edge. So with the generated PDF document I can select one of the 
links on the table of contents which will take me to the document. I can open up the bookmarks and we'll see that these reflect the navigation pane. So I can select one of these and I'll be taken to the relevant place in the document and you'll see the cross references in the figures also work. So if I select one of these it will take me once again to the relevant place in the document. So that's the end of this tutorial video. So here's a slide just to recap on what I covered. And here's another slide with some recommended other videos. I'll leave links to these in the description. The referencing in Microsoft Word with Mendeley Desktop tutorial video that I made now has 150,000 views. I was surprised with this outreach, but I'm glad people have been finding it useful.